emojis Oh my, there I go again You don't score enough, I mean no offense So of course, the big topic of conversation is NHL expansion. Could there be more teams coming in? We just got Seattle. We got Vegas not too long ago. Are you getting the sense yeah. that the NHL is ready for expansion again? I know that there's been speculation around, uh, what is Atlanta and what's Houston? City hasn't had a professional ice hockey team since the Houston Arrows, as you know, who called Houston home for just shy of two decades. So naturally, the prospect of getting an NHL team has a lot of people talking. Like, when you talk expansion, you talk about any sort of potential mega money maker you're you're not likely ever going to get the commissioner to give a hard no i mean money talks right i would put an nhl team here tomorrow but it's 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 got this one has got to work Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the newest NHL expansion franchise, the Houston Comets. Of course, Houston has long been rumored as a potential destination for an NHL franchise, and now those rumors have finally come to fruition, as the Houston Comets will now join the Astros, Rockets, and Texans, as the city of Houston will now be represented in all four major professional North American sports. Great success. I chose to name the team the Comets because the theme of space is very relevant to the city of Houston. For one, NASA has the Johnson Space Center located right here in Houston. And two, with teams like the Houston Astros and Rockets, it's clear the city of Houston and its fans embrace the space theme. For the logo, I chose this logo of a star with a puck going through it as I thought it worked well with the whole space slash Comets theme. And I went with a blue, red, and white color scheme, which is the exact same as NASA's. Taking a look at the team jerseys, we've got the home jerseys, which are predominantly blue with red and white stripes and note the pants which have stars going down the sides i thought that worked really well with the space theme and really brought the uniform together the away jersey is of course predominantly white and i made the jersey numbers and pants blue it just looked a lot better than red did and with the alternate jersey i essentially just reversed our home blues as i made red the predominant color our home arena toyota center of course was updated with our team colors and presentations including this pretty sweet space themed intro i gotta tell you it was perfect and meet our team mascot, Buzz the Space Dog, who is named after legendary astronaut Buzz Aldrin. So the Houston Comets are now created and ready to go, so now it's time to go ahead and enter franchise mode to officially begin the Houston Comets expansion into the NHL. So here they are, the newest team in the NHL, the Houston Comets, so let's go ahead and select them as our team here. And as you can see, I've also updated our AHL team, and I stuck with the space theme, as I named them the Houston Apollos and gave them the Spaceman logo. And the Houston Comets will be playing in the Western Conference, of course, inside the Central Division, as that is where they would most likely be put if Houston was ever to have a franchise in real life. That makes sense to me. Owner mode, we are going to be turning that off for this franchise mode. I'm also going to turn player morale off. I'm just not a huge fan of that. Fog of War, we are also going to be turning that off. Head coach edit lines off. And I'm going to go ahead and add a contract year to every player since this is an expansion draft franchise. Franchise mode length, I'm going to put it 20 years. Not sure exactly how many seasons we'll do of this franchise, but we are going to do a bunch for sure. So 20 years is fine. Okay, so here we are in franchise mode and we are just days away from the expansion draft. So let's go ahead and sim ahead here and here we have the results for the nhl draft lottery and as you can see we unfortunately moved down one spot going from the third pick to the fourth overall pick so not the best results here in the draft lottery for your houston comets but it also could have been a lot worse fourth overall isn't too bad we should be able to walk away with a pretty solid prospect here but before we can even start worrying about the nhl draft or anything like that we have to complete the expansion draft first so without wasting any more time let's get into the expansion draft this is so exciting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the expansion draft. And of course, we are going to be able to select one player from every single NHL franchise, except for the Seattle Kraken. They will be exempt from this expansion draft per NHL rules. And I think my strategy going into this expansion draft, obviously, I still have to go through all the teams and see who they have available. But I think I'm going to try to draft this team as balanced as I can. So I'm not necessarily just going to take the players with the highest overalls every single time. I'm going to keep the future in mind. Of course, it's going to 
going to take me a little while to go through every single team and decide who I'm going to take. So I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and spend the next little while making all my selections. And then I will join back with you guys and go over all of my picks. So I will see you guys in just a few seconds. Many, many minutes later. All right. I have just finished up the expansion draft. I have selected all of our players that are going to be part of our new franchise. So let's go ahead and take a look at each one of my picks here, starting with the Anaheim Ducks, where we took right winger Frank Vitrano. So a nice solid pick here for Houston to start us off. We've got an 81 overall winger onto our team now. He's only 28, so he fits right in there. He's got top six forward potential. So a nice goal scoring winger here to throw onto our team and just a nice solid pick here to start our draft. On the Arizona Coyotes, I took right winger Christian Fisher. So we pick up another solid young winger here in Christian Fisher. He's only low top nine potential, but he is only 25 years old. So he's still got some room to grow. And as you can see, the options on Arizona just weren't all that great. So it was actually a pretty easy choice here taking Fisher. And in one of the biggest selections during the expansion draft from the Boston Bruins, we selected winger Tyler Bertuzzi. And surprisingly, this was actually a difficult pick. As you can see, Jake DeBrusque and Pavel Zaka were both available two players that I debated very heavily on taking here but at the end of the day Tyler Bertuzzi was way too tempting to pass up here with that 87 overall and on the Buffalo Sabres we are going to be taking our first goalie off the board we are taking the young Ugo Pekka Lukanen he's got medium elite potential so that's really exciting he's already an 80 overall and he's only 23 years old so this is going to be someone that we can potentially build around in the Houston Comets net and completing our goaltending duo from the Calgary Flames we are taking goaltender Dan Vladar 84 overall he's only 24 years old He's got starter potential. So this is going to be our number one goalie going into the season along with Uko Pekka Lukanen. And at just 24 years old for Vladar and 23 years old for Lukanen, we have two extremely talented and young goaltenders here that we can build around. From the Carolina Hurricanes, we took the polarizing young winger, Jesse Pugliarvi. And even though there are some good veteran guys like Patch Reddy and Brent Burns available, I just want to take a shot on Pugliarvi here. He is still only 24 years old with medium top six potential. So maybe Pugliarvi can finally find his game here in Houston as a member of the Comets. On the Chicago Blackhawks, I selected left winger Anders Bjork. He's 25 years old with top six potential. And much like the Christian Fisher pick with Arizona, there just wasn't a ton of great options to choose from. So I went with one of the younger guys available here in Bjork. And perhaps the player slash pick that I am most excited about here in the expansion draft from the Colorado Avalanche, I took defenseman Sam Girard. He's already an 84 overall and he's got that top four defense potential. So this is someone we are definitely going to build around. So yeah, this is definitely the pick that I am most excited about. And I couldn't believe it when I saw who was available from the Columbus Blue Jackets as they allowed us to take their top defensive prospect, David Yurichek. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Only 18 years old, 77 overall. He's got medium elite potential. Of course, David Yurichek was taken sixth overall in 2022 by Columbus. So just an absolute steal here. I can't believe he wasn't protected. Columbus, you will regret this one. Snagging another top defensive prospect, this time from the Dallas Stars, I took defenseman Thomas Harley. So just another really good young defenseman here who has a ton of potential for us. I did take a look here at Ty Delandria. He was certainly tempting, but at the end of the day, Thomas Harley, too good to pass up. On the Detroit Red Wings, we took the young left winger, Michael Rasmussen. Again, kind of continuing with the theme of taking young, talented players. He's got top nine potential, 79 overall, and he's only 23 years old. From the Edmonton Oilers, we took the talented left winger, Clem Costin. So again, we're really starting to stockpile the really young, talented, talented forwards and defensemen on this team. Clem Costin fits right into that mold. He's only 23 years old, 78 overall, and he's got top six potential. From the Florida Panthers, we took the young centerman, Alexi Hepaniemi. He's got medium top six potential, is a 77 overall, and is still only 23 years old. Going back to defense, we selected Sean Dersey from the Los Angeles Kings. He's a solid young right-handed defenseman. I think he'll really complement Sam Girard, the young defenseman that we drafted from Colorado. I think the two of them will really combine to make a really good top defense pair. From the Minnesota Wild, we took another really good right-handed shot defenseman, as I took Kale Addison. 
only 22 years old. He's got that 80 overall and he's got top four defense potential. And on the Montreal Canadiens, we will be taking our third and final goalie here during the expansion draft as we take the young Caden Primo. He's got starter potential and at 79 overall, he's going to get a ton of opportunities to play at the AHL level. So we now have 22 year old Caden Primo at 79 overall, 23 year old Uko Pekka Lukanen at 80 overall, and 24 year old Dan Vladar at 84 overall. So we have three really solid goaltending options here in the Houston Comets organization. On the Nashville Predators, we went ahead and took the two-way defenseman Cal Foote, another good young defenseman here at 23 years old, top four defense potential, and at six foot four, love his size, and he's a right-handed shot. On the New Jersey Devils, we took the young centerman Michael McLeod. I was going to take the left winger here, Miles Wood, but I'd kind of, at this point in the draft, I needed to take some centermen, so I went ahead and I took the young 24-year-old Michael McLeod. He's still 80 overall, which is solid, and he's got top six potential. On the New York Islanders, I took 82 overall left winger Pierre Engvall. I did debate taking a player like Anders Lee here, but he's already 31 years old, and he's got four years left at $7 million a season, so... I didn't see a ton of value in taking that contract on, so I went ahead and I took Pierre Engvall. From the New York Rangers, I was extremely excited to be able to take the young centerman, Philip Hedl. And while Vlad Tarasenko was available, like I mentioned prior to the draft, I'm not just looking for the players with the highest overall, I'm definitely drafting with future seasons in mind. So at the end of the day, Philip Hedl has just way too much potential to pass up here. He plays center. And with medium top six potential, he's going to have a chance to play top line minutes and develop into a piece we could potentially build around. Our pick on the Ottawa Senators was the young right winger, Matthew Joseph. And he was actually a pretty easy choice when you take a look at all of our options here on Ottawa. They just didn't give us a lot to pick from. So 25 years old, top six potential, 82 overall, Matthew Joseph, easy pick. Moving on to the Philadelphia Flyers, where we selected left winger Kiefer Bellows. Again, didn't want to take anybody like Atkinson or JVR, any of these guys. Guys, they're all in their 30s not really what I'm looking for so yeah I went ahead and I took the younger player in Kiefer Bellows who's just 24 years old on the Pittsburgh Penguins we will be taking right winger Kasperi Kapanen 82 overall top six potential so another really good winger here that we're going to be adding to the team on the San Jose Sharks we are going to take a solid young prospect here in offensive defenseman Ryan Merkley and interestingly enough Ryan Merkley is actually in the Colorado Avalanche organization in real life as he was dealt at this year's trade deadline so that was something that just kind of slipped by me when I was going over my custom roster. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Merkley's still just 21 years old and actually has low elite potential, so that's really, really nice. So just another solid young right-handed defenseman that we can add into the organization now. From the St. Louis Blues, I took right winger Alexei Toropchenko. Only top nine potential, but he is just 22 years old, so there's some decent potential there. And looking at the other options available here in St. Louis, Toropchenko was the pretty easy pick. Moving on to the Tampa Bay Lightning, where I selected defenseman Hayden flurry again a team where i just wasn't in love with a lot of the options they were giving me but at just 25 years old and 80 overall hayden flurry wasn't too bad from the toronto maple leafs i took forward alex kerfoot i could have taken the centerman david camp here as he is the exact same age overall and potential but kerfoot does have the ability to play center and i just personally prefer him over a guy like camp on the vancouver canucks i took defenseman ethan bear he's an 83 overall so he was actually the best player available on the canucks based off of just that but he's also also just 24 years old and he's low top four defense potential and our final defenseman off the board here in the expansion draft from the Vegas Golden Knights I selected Nicholas Hegg again he's young at just 23 years old he's got top four potential and is already an 82 overall on the Washington Capitals I took winger Sonny Milano he's 26 years old with top six potential and he's an 82 overall And rounding out our expansion draft, from the Winnipeg Jets, we took winger Nino Niederreiter. He'll be a solid veteran forward for us on what is looking like a very young team. I probably would have taken Neil Pionk here, but we just had way too many defensemen already. So those are the results from the expansion draft. Again, like I said, definitely drafted a very young team. I didn't necessarily take the best players available based on overall, but I do think I took the players from each team with the most potential. I think we've got a really solid goaltending duo between Uko Pekka Lukanen and Dan Vladar, aka Darth Vlader, and our defense is absolutely stacked with young defensemen like Sean Dersey, Sam Gerrard, and David Yurichek. On forward, we have some question marks for sure, but Tyler Bertuzzi should be a solid player for us, and if guys like Philip Hedl and Jesse Pugliarvi can develop for us, we'll be just fine. You better be right. 
With the expansion draft now complete, we have the rest of the offseason to get through. So of course, we have the NHL draft where we hold the fourth overall pick. And then we also have free agency. Taking a look at our top prospects going into the draft, you've got left winger Yerky Verkunin. There are some concerns if he could handle a professional environment, but he does care about winning. And his player comparison is Bobby Hall. So not too shabby there. Of course, we hold the fourth overall pick in the draft. So unfortunately, we probably won't be able to draft this guy there at four. So realistically, we are likely going to get one of these five Americans here at the top of the draft. You've got the left winger, Dwight Austin, right winger, Easton Lau, who is a two-way forward, defensive defenseman, Aiden Marks, and two-way centerman, Felipe Richardson, who our scouts have actually listed as a potential gem in this draft class. So going into the draft, I'm really hoping that I can grab one of these guys, Felipe Richardson, Aiden Marks, or Easton Lau. They're all medium elite potential. Although I will say I am leaning towards taking a forward with our pick due to the fact that we drafted so many good young defensemen during the expansion draft. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the NHL draft, so let's get into it. So the Chicago Blackhawks, of course, have the first overall pick, and the Arizona Coyotes pick number two and number three, and then at number four, your Houston Comets will be selecting. So let's go ahead and sim these top three picks and see who goes. So with the first overall pick, the Chicago Blackhawks, not surprisingly, take the left winger, Jyrki Verkunen, out of Finland. He's an 83 overall, medium elite, so definitely a really solid pick there at first overall for the Chicago Blackhawks. At number two overall, the Arizona Coyotes select the left winger, Dwight Austin. He's a playmaker with medium elite potential, and he sits at 78 overall, so a really solid pick by Arizona at number two. And with the third pick, they also take the right winger, Easton Lau. Only a 72 overall, but he does have that medium elite potential. But now the moment we have been waiting for, it is now time for us to make our first ever draft pick in the history of the Houston Comets franchise, as we of course hold the fourth overall pick. Looking at our options, we've got the defenseman here in Aiden Marks. He's got the zone ability of bouncer, and he's also got two superstar abilities. He's got quick pick and truculence, so this guy is definitely a beast. We've also got the centerman, Felipe Richardson, who of course our scouts have listed as a potential gem in this draft he's also medium elite and he's a two-way forward he stands at six foot three and 191 pounds so he's got really good size and he's apparently a really good leader and is respected in the locker room and that makes a lot of sense when you take in the fact that his player comp is jonathan taze he doesn't have his zone ability but he does have three superstar abilities so he's got bouncer elite edges and yoink and while taking the stay-at-home defenseman does feel like it would be a really good safe pick we got a lot of really good young defensemen during the expansion draft so i think there's just a lot of value here in taking the centerman Felipe Richardson with the fourth overall pick. So let's go ahead and do that. So with the first pick in the history of the Houston Comets franchise, we select the centerman Felipe Richardson. So not bad. He's a medium elite. He's got a 72 overall, much like Easton Lau, who went before him. So let's just see who the Seattle Kraken here take. Let's see if we uh, potentially made a mistake. They do take Aiden Marks. He also has 72 overall with medium elite. So we didn't miss out on a player with a better overall. I definitely think we made the right choice by taking the center in Felipe Richardson. You have done well. All right, so here we are in the second round with our second pick in the draft. I'm going to go ahead and take the left winger here in Jalen Ling. He doesn't have any listed weaknesses and his strengths are puck protection, balance, and hard wrist shot. So I like that from a left winger. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and take Jalen Ling, the left winger here with our second round pick. Oh my God. Oh. And it's a terrible pick. He's only a bottom six potential. So a complete waste of our second rounder here. That's really too bad. Ouch, town population, you bro. I really thought he was a solid prospect there. He had two bars at medium elite. I really thought he was going to be a good player for us. But unfortunately, he's only a bottom six forward. With our third round pick, we'll be taking the centerman out of the USA, Calvin Rivera. So a bit of a better pick there. He's got that top nine potential, but he's only a 49 overall. So definitely a prospect that's super raw. We'll see if we're able to develop him, but he's definitely going to be a long-term project with our fourth round pick i took defenseman sam dickinson which was once again an absolutely terrible pick as he only has top two ahl potential you blew it but we had a good selection here in round number five as i took stanislav kometov a russian right winger who's 49 overall and has top six potential with our sixth round pick, I took defenseman Sergei Petrov. He's only got seventh D potential and he's a 50 overall, but he's a defensive defenseman who stands at six foot six. So when I was looking at all my options, I just couldn't pass up a defenseman with that kind of size. But unfortunately, he's only got that seventh D potential. And with our seventh and final pick here in the NHL draft, I ended up taking left winger Lars Omark, a bottom six potential player with 49 overall. So this draft was a little bit hit or miss. I'd say we kind of hit some picks. We definitely missed on some picks. Not the greatest 
greatest draft. Well, no fucking shit. But we definitely walked away with some decent players, especially our number four overall pick, Felipe Richardson. So with the NHL draft done now, it is time to go ahead to go to our contracts. So thankfully, none of the players that we drafted in the expansion draft are on an expiring contract currently. So we've got our entire team locked up. We just have our rookies to sign here. So Felipe Richardson, 72 overall medium league potential. We're going to go ahead and offer him a contract. We're going to get him signed to his entry level contract here. And he's going to get back to us tonight about that. Now, in a normal franchise mode, I probably wouldn't sign any of our rookies outside of Felipe Richardson to their entry-level contracts. I would just let them play in the juniors for another year to develop. But since this is an expansion draft, we only have 31 of 50 contracts currently signed to our organization. So I am going to have to sign some of our picks here to help fill out our AHL team. So I'm going to sign Jalen Ling to his ELC. I'm also going to sign Sam Dickinson. And I'm going to go ahead and sign Sergei Petrov. Komatov, Omark, and Rivera. I won't sign them to their ELCs yet. I'll just let them return to their junior teams. So Sam Dickinson has joined. Jalen Ling is signed. Felipe Richardson has joined the team. And Sergei Petrov has also accepted his contract. Okay, perfect. Nice and easy. So that's all done. Our contracts are settled. Taking a look at our top free agents here. Not a ton available. You got some veterans like Brandon Sutter, Alex Chaison, Danny DeKaiser, Antoine Roussel, guys like that. I'm actually going to sort this uh, by potential. As you can see, we've got a ton of really good players here with top six potential. We only have 34 out of 50 contracts on our team. So I'm going to go ahead and sign a bunch of these young players here in free agency to fill out the rest of our AHL team and our overall roster. So as you guys can see, I went ahead and signed a bunch of young players for organizational depth. I'm not going to go through every single one of these signings with you guys, but I just wanted you to see I signed a bunch of young players in free agency here. Just really filling out the rest of our team and our roster. What the hell is even that? Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to do during the off season. So now I'm going to go ahead and sim to the regular season. And if any big trades happen while I'm simming here in the off season, I will definitely let you guys know. Okay, so here we are in the preseason. Of course, I'm not going to play any preseason games or anything like that. So let's just go ahead and sim to the regular season. Okay, so we finished simming up the preseason. And as you guys can see, our very first game ever in the history of the Houston Comets franchise is going to be a home game against the Winnipeg Jets. So going ahead and taking a look at our lines now, we've got Philip Heedle centering the top line with Tyler Bertuzzi and Jesse Pugliarvi. Pierre Engvall will be centering the second line with Nino Niederreiter and Frank Vitrano. Alex Kerfoot will be centering Kasperi Kapanen and Sonny Milano on the third line. And the young centerman Michael McLeod will be centering the fourth line with Matthew Joseph and Klim Kostin on his wings. So we may not have that superstar player on forward, but we've definitely got some pretty good pieces here. I don't necessarily have super high expectations for this offense or anything like that here in year one but i do think we have some decent depth and could surprise some people Ew. taking a look at our defense on our top pair we've got sam gerard and ethan bear and i was gonna have sean Dursey playing with sam gerard on the top pair but as you guys can see when i switch that sean Dursey and sam gerard get to a minus three line chemistry so that is definitely not worth it so we're gonna have ethan bear there on the top pair with sam gerard while sean Dursey will be on the second pair with nick hag and on our third defense pair we've got hayden flurry playing with Kalen Addison. In net, you've got Dan Vladar as our starting goaltender with Uko Pekka Lukanen backing him up. And in our scratch, we've got the young winger, Michael Rasmussen, as well as Kyle Foote. And just looking really quickly at our AHL team, this is a really solid minor league team. We've got Kiefer Bellows, Hepa Niemi and Toropchenko there on the first line. And centering the second line, we've got the fourth overall pick in the NHL draft, Felipe Richardson. And our number one defense prospect, David Yurichek, will be playing on the top defense pair along with Thomas Harley. And the young netminder, Caden Primo, will be the starting goalie here in the AHL for the Houston Apollos. But that is where I'm going to end things here today, guys. In this episode, I just wanted to introduce you guys to the Houston Comets, get the expansion draft done, get through the offseason, the NHL draft and free agency, and get to this point where we are now where we are ready to start the nhl regular season going forward in future episodes in this series every episode will be an entire season so episode two will be year one episode three will be year two episode four will be year three and so on i hope you guys are as excited as i am for the future of the houston comments and this series on the channel thank you guys so much for watching and until next time moose out